Hi, we Bob here. And the question I'm asking you to answer today goes as follows. Is digital art a beautiful thing or a curse? So I haven't really tried the oil painting brushes much in Rebel 5 and thought I would give painting with them a go and see how I got on. Have you ever picked up a new art medium and felt totally out of your depth? Well, that is how I felt doing this to start with. But I kept going, trying different methods and also using some of my other mediums as I still have some things to learn about painting with oil digitally. Anyway, so we got the drawing to this point and the process of drawing this fully will be for a future video because there's some features I want to, to bring to your attention with regards to painting this. So why would digital art be a curse and beautiful at the same time? Well, to start with, I have taken this face that I have painted and using the clone tool, I was able to set out a series of them in a row. What we can do now is experiment to see what different stories we can tell from each of these images and perhaps the image as a whole. Starting with this first face, I was just thinking how subtle a change can I make to change the perception of the story. The girl here just looks in thought or perhaps laying her head down while thinking about her day. Just with simply lifting her cheek up a wee bit, we can change her look to somewhat smirking or thinking about something funny that happened that day. We can go in and change the feeling of the face with simple changes and this truly can be a blessing and a curse as the smallest of changes can make quite a bit of difference. Comparing the original with this newer version, we can see those differences. Without digital art, it would be more difficult to get into our paintings and experiment in this way. Not impossible, but certainly not as easy as it can be in a digital world. The question then moves on to um, what else could we do? What other story could we tell? So let's try out some other alterations, but this type of exercise can really help us to try and get better at understanding such things as the structure of the face, the planes of the face, where light and shadow hit. So we want to be thinking, where does light hit and shadow fall? When drawing the original version of this, I had so many layers just with different versions on them. Some of them were different types of layers from overlay to colour, and it was proving difficult for me to keep track of these, which I would say is a one of the curses of digital art. How many layers should we have? As I've talked about previously, I just tend to work on one layer rather than having everything set out. I do look at people who use multiple layers with some envy when you see how they can control and manipulate their drawings. For me though, I forget which layer I'm working on and end up forgetting to change back to the proper layer and things just get all kind of messy. What about you? Do you use loads of layers and have them all nicely organised? The thing I love about drawing is that we set out with perhaps a main goal, a thought in our head, where we're going to go. I see a reference and plan to paint exactly this or exactly this story. And as the process goes on, I end up seeing things or heading down unintended alleyways. At this point in the original, I was seeing multiple things and I do sometimes wonder, is that just my brain that sees these things? So I'm going to let this run just for about 30 seconds and let me know what compositions you see or what alleyway you would have taken with painting at this point. Where would you have went with it? What story would you have told? Getting back to this painting, let's call it different versions in a neon world. We move on to the second iteration and all we've done here was just subtly change the edge of the lip, making the girl appear rather annoyed or hurt compared with the original. We will make some more dramatic changes in the other versions um, coming up just to see where else can we take our drawings, what other story can we tell. For the third drawing, I just wanted to change the look of the face by giving the girl a smaller nose. This did somewhat cause the distance from the mouth to the nose to be longer than I would usually make it, but hey, everyone's face is different. So where does this process end? When does the art process end with a particular piece that we're working on? And therein lies one of the major curses. Perhaps we have the ability to change our drawings too much that we just never stop. This curse exists in traditional art 
And in that world I have fell foul of going too far and ruining a drawing or painting that was beautiful at one stage, or beautiful in my eyes I suppose. The traditional issue where there is no do-over, to use a film type phrase I have heard a lot recently. Um, there is no undo button or layer that we can go back to, there is no previously saved state. And the beauty and the curse of digital art is we have the power. He-Man, eat your heart out. With the fourth girl, the plan was just running mascara and a change of hair colour. I think it provides a pretty powerful change of emotion just from these minor additions. So as Bilbo Baggins would say, and if you've watched some of my previous videos you may have heard me say this, it's a dangerous business Frodo, going out of your door. You step into the road, and if you don't keep your feet there is no knowing where you might be swept off to. At the outset of this drawing I saw a story, I saw a path, I saw a destination in the various references I was using, and that was my intended path, but it took the wrong exit at some point. That part of our head where imagination, um, for example you're walking down the street and you see a piece of rubbish or something in the street, and you wonder where, how did that get here, what's the story, can I rewind time to figure out its journey. This sort of sums up the fifth iteration of our drawing and it is a path I find myself drawn to on a regular basis, the path of neon worlds, artificial intelligence, Blade Runner, that type of world just, I don't know, some, somehow that exit seems wider than all the other ones. Here we have a robot based version of our drawing which again is a great way to think in your head about the 3D shapes and the contours of the face, drawing something like this. Even during the process we can try things, we get to pull from our experiences in life with technology and those markings that set it out in form from the other forms that exist. At this stage we now have five versions in our world, where do we go now? Let's just think of our head, a word, perhaps veil and texture, or in the case or in my case even, just the day of the week that came to mind due to watching that Netflix show that seems pretty popular at the moment. Don't worry there's no spoilers in this video, but I did enjoy it. I was testing out the overlay layer here as I just wanted to darken the lips not redraw them. The overlay layer is great for this type of change. I spent most of my time on these last two characters before going back to the beginning and starting again with some other ideas, mainly because I wasn't happy with the first versions I created. How many possibilities are open to us with layers? We have 23 different types of layers in Rebel 5 alone. Obviously they all have their own uses, but it's a lot to take in and all these little hidden tools available to us can seriously give us the fear of missing out. I should be using these tools we tell ourselves. Again the curse strikes and these tools lurk like a glowing pair of eyes peering from the closet in your room while we peek out from the shield that is our duvet. I'm not going to keep you here all day, but I did go back through some of these older versions to see what effects I could get. Like I said previously, where does it end? But I will tell you it is very enjoyable to do this, almost addictive. But we need to move on from the curse that is all these tools available to us in digital art. We need to break down those fences, go where no man has gone before as the Star Trek saying goes, because if we don't we're going to be prevented from discovering something incredible. So definitely get your mighty digital pen in hand and go create the worlds and stories that may be tomorrow's legends, just don't get stuck in the loop. If you want to see more sombre tale from Bob, me, check out my Hobbiton video up in the corner. Thanks for watching and Wee Bob is out.